So hi there everyone. Today we're gonna be making swatches and a sample painting using my Lucas Aquarel 1862 watercolors from Germany. I got this through my friend from United States. It's Tara and it costs around 75 US dollars or 4,000 Philippine pesos last year in 2017. Um, I had no problems in shipping fee because my friend bought it here to the Philippines when she went home for vacation. So this set comes in a special packaging. A packaging I don't usually uh, see in watercolor sets. So it has a pop-up which has an information in German so I cannot understand it. Anyway, it's fine. By the way, this is not an unboxing video because I have already opened it and I have already peeled off the covers of the half half uh, half pants sorry um this set is a 24 half pan set and here is the tin the tin case which is a usual tin case this is the swatch i prepared before and these are the half pans and of course the mothballs for uh, protection from insects so let's do the swatching. I did not need to pre-wet this set because in my earlier experience, it re-wets easily. So let's begin. Let me zoom in it a little bit closer. So that's, that's it. So firstly, we have opaque white. So as expected, it's opaque. There you go. Next we have lemon yellow. By the way, let's disregard this swatch. So let's have lemon yellow. I think lemon yellow is also a um, it's also a primary should have written it sorry for that primary as labeled in their original cover because in this uh, set that Lucas has uh, the, they have three primaries the lemon yellow the magenta and the cyan uh, if you have observed um, some ink manufacturers or printer manufacturers use also lemon yellow magenta and cyan for their primaries so I think it has something they have something similar with regards to the concept of naming these three as they're similar as their primary should have said so now this is yellow ochre. Next we have Indian yellow. Next is permanent yellow deep which uses PO, a pigment orange, PO62. Next is Cadmium Red Light. Cadmium Red Light, but uses pigment orange 20. Next we have permanent red light. Next we have another red, a laser and crimson. Next is Another primary, magenta. Mm. 
Next is the yoxazine purple, which is intense uh, as always, just like in any other brand. Next, we have ultramarine light. But doesn't look like it's very intense. Next, we have Russian blue. Which is also strong. Next is Thalo blue. Which doesn't which feels actually very close to uh, to Thalo uh, to Prussian blue they're recognizable they ident they're they're not exactly the same but you can identify still yeah but they are close next is another primary which is the uh, cyan primary this feels more like yeah that Taylor blue because it uses PB 15 is to 3 like a crossbreed of um, cerulean and Taylor a crossbreed <laughs> next we have Taylor green Which actually feels like a viridian because it's quite not as you know as uh, staining as the usual Taylor green that I see because it's BG7. And my favorite green in the set, though it's always opaque in all the brands that I've used it but you can use it directly even if you don't mix it with other colors next is May Green I'm not a fan of yellow greens or of greens that are you know but it's just me <laughs> Next is uh, olive green because I prefer you know muted and you know, dark greens, muted greens, earth greens like this uh, olive green. Usually greens that I can use directly for landscapes. Next we have English red light. Of course, PR101, so it's opaque. Next, we have Burnt Umber. Which is balanced, very balanced brown. Next is Raw Umber. This is our cool and deep brown so you have a um, balanced or a mid-range brown we have a deep cool brown and a reddish shade of brown next we have paints gray which is also nice and lastly Ivory black. So here are the twenty four colors. Let me zoom it in or focus it closer for you. Overall, they are look very vibrant and um, some of them are quite opaque like this but it's fine for me 
um, by performance, it feels like um, very comparable to a Van Gogh. So now let's proceed to our sample painting. For, for this painting, I'm making a landscape painting as usual with a lake view. So I'm wetting the, ba the background first. And let me use Indian yellow view. You can see it, it flows uh, very smoothly also. By the way, I'm using Arches 185. And then a mixture of ultramarine and um, permanent red light for a warm purple. So let's see, we can allow, sorry for that, we can allow it to move towards the yellow and let it mix by its own, if it will, <laughs> let's see, and adding some more blue at the upper side. So does it move? I think we need a little bit more help. Because it's not mixing that fast. some patches clouds okay next we go to the reflection So the reflection is always lighter and less detailed. No, don't forget to leave some white parts. Okay, so later on we'll be putting the reflection also of the mountain. when the sky is dry already so now let's paint the ground by mixing english red light and uh, burnt umber again just base not forgetting to leave again some unpainted spots and we can allow also the colors to meet So using raw umber. To 
to warm it. It's not dry yet, but I can. I think we can start now by mixing paints gray, maybe, and raw umber. So this time it's um, like a dawn painting, and some ultramarine. You can see it's not dry yet it's mixing with the sky but this is just a demo so it's it's fine and it's mixing as well to our sea or our lake so let's put the reflection So we can also add the text, some texture using the colors that are left. So let's help it dry faster. Now we go to the um, the landscape, and I think we need to use Taylor Green and mix it to the remaining mixture that we just used, and some more of Paints Gray. So when this um, watercolor gets a little bit drier, we can start putting our, our trees. I think we can put some trees now. So here's the distant trees okay and some near
assuming we have more trees at the background. Some more for me. And some more, but let me uh, do some more mixes. So now we have a. Uh, let's do some no, some more branches that are nearer. And some shadows also on the ground and also let's put some more um, greens here and some solid lines of reflection of the sun or the rays for it to be more lively and at the foreground i'd like to add some some flowers maybe or yeah. but it's still wet so you can see it's the colors are getting drowned <laughs> it's mixing with the base foreground but it's it's fine so i think we can put some white flowers and to test if the white is really strong enough and opaque enough to surface now i seldom use white because i want to hold on to the practice that in watercolor we don't use white but in some instances like this it can be a uh, disregarded so yeah the white is opaque obviously and some maybe some yellow flowers let's mix it with white There you go. So overall, 
the Lucas um, Aquarel 1862 or 1862 works good for our landscape painting and uh, according to some it's opaque but actually it's not all colors are opaque but there are some like the burnt umber the english red light olive green chromium the yellow ochre even the lemon yellow yeah and the cadmiums are opaque but if you manage to you know use the right amount of water they can still work very well in your painting so in the coming days i'd be uh hopefully i'd be able to use this set m more so that i can uh, show you more output using this watercolor so there you go please subscribe and stay tuned for more thank you for watching